Finding the equation of a normal line is very similar to finding the equation of a tangent. The only difference is, well, a normal line, let's maybe look at this, something that is normal. So a normal line. I don't mean normal as in regular, as in uh, what you would commonly find. What I mean here is, um, whoops, I better actually just draw this again. So a normal line. Uh, what it is, and it is perpendicular to a tangent line. Now, what do I mean by that? Oops, I need to make this an A here. Perpendicular to a tangent line. In other words, you know, the theta here between them is 90 degrees. Sometimes we write perpendicular, we write it like this right here. So perpendicular. What I mean by that, let's say we have some sort of graph here, so x and a y, and then maybe I've drawn some sort of, uh, yeah, some sort of shape here. Maybe at this point right here, I've drawn the, um, the tangent line. So maybe the tangent goes like this. Maybe this right here is the tangent line. So I'll call that tangent line. Well, if I want the normal line, what I do is at that same point though, so maybe I wanted the tangent line at that exact point, the normal line is going to be 90 degrees to it, so it's going to be like this. This is a normal line. Okay, that's how we actually find that. So the normal line is going to be 90 degrees to the tangent line. So it's like, well, just basically start with finding a tangent line and then just make sure that you do this. So I'm going to show you the steps here that I would take in order to do it. So I would say, first of all, step one. You still do what we uh, do for uh, the equation of a tangent line, which means, um, well, there we would find the slope or the gradient of the tangent at that point. So like we were doing before, in other words, we find the derivative. So that's great, same first step. We still need to know the slope of the tangent line. Now step two, this is where it's uh, more interesting, or at least where it's different. So step two is the sort of key one here. In step two, what we want to do now is find the slope of the normal. So find slope of the normal. And how do we do that? Well, we're going to use this trick here that the slope of one of them times the slope of the second one equals negative one. This is the key to use here. See, the idea is that here we will have found, I mean, it doesn't matter which, uh, which m value you use. You can call one of them m1, the other one can be m2. It doesn't matter. The trick is that two slopes that are perpendicular to each other means that when you multiply them together, you'll get negative one which means the slope of this red one here would be some value, and the slope of this normal one would be another value. And it turns out this slope times this slope will always give you negative one if they're perpendicular. That's the key to doing this. So see what you will have done. Here you will have found the slope of the tangent, and that'll give you one m value. And the whole goal is to find the slope of the normal, which is the other m value. So you do that by just using this property. And then step three, of course, once you know the slope of the normal, then step three is use point slope like we did before, which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So we did that before, at least in the video, if you've, saw, if you've already seen the video of equation of a tangent line, then you'll see these, at least step one and step three would be there. But here I've added an extra step here. So to do that equation of a normal line, you just first find your equation uh, or the slope of the tangent. Then you basically convert that to the normal and then just use point slope as usual. So that is how we deal with uh, equation of a normal. So that's important. I'm going to put that little green here like this. So maybe let's do an example. So I want to find the equation for the normal line of this graph, square root of x minus x squared. It may look crazy, but we can still do this easily. And we want this at x equals 1. So maybe I'll do this in blue again. So step 1 is to find the, let's see here. Step 1 is to find the slope of the tangent at that point. So let's do that. If I have f of x, well, then I want f primed of x. 
Now the only problem is this isn't very calculus friendly, so maybe I should rewrite this. Because I want this square root to be written as an exponent. If you remember your square root trick, this is like a little 2 here. Square root is the same thing as saying x to the power of 1 over 2. And this minus x squared is no problem here. So now, how do I do this? Well, the derivative is going to be, let's see, 1 half comes in front. So 1 half times x. And 1 half minus 1 is going to be like 1 half minus 2 halves. And that gives me negative 1 half. That may look ugly, but there it is. And then the derivative of minus x squared is going to be minus 2. It's going to come in, well, the 2 is going to come in front here. So minus 1 times the 2 gives me minus 2 times x to the power of just 1, because 2 minus 1 is just 1. There we go. Maybe, though, I want to make this a little bit prettier to look at, so I'm going to say, well, a negative exponent is the same thing as dropping it down to the bottom and saying 1 over 2, like this. That's the same. Maybe, though, I want to actually move this just to put the 1 in the middle. There we go. All that is minus 2x. That means, if I want to make it even nicer to look at, uh, something to the power of 1 half is the same thing as saying square root. So it's 1 over 2 times the square root of x. All that minus 2x. Okay, I've got my derivative. But I need it at that point. So I need to know what f primed of 1 is. I need to know it at this particular point, at x equals 1. Because right? that's where I want it. I want it at this point. So because of that, then I can just say, well, that's 1 over, let's see, 2 times the square root of 1 minus 2 times 1. So in that case, I've got f primed of 1 is going to be equal to, well, square root of 1 is just 1. So 1 over 2 is what I get here, minus just 2 here. So that's great. I've got my slope. I'm almost done. Except maybe I want to rewrite this in common denominators. So I'm going to say 1 over 2 minus, well, this is 4 over 2. So therefore, I can say that my f primed of 1 is going to be, well, 1 over 2 minus 4 over 2. 1 minus 4 is negative 3. So negative 3 over 2. So this right here I needed, this is the slope of the tangent. So if I just wanted the tangent line, I've got the slope of the tangent. But I want the normal. So what do I do for step 2? Step 2 is to find the slope of the normal. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to use this property here. So I'm going to say, maybe I'll do it in red here. So slope of the normal is going to be, well, I'm going to use this property that m1, m2 equals negative 1. Now I know one of them. It doesn't matter what I call it. Let's say the slope of the normal. I'm just going to call it m. So I know that negative 3 halves times my mystery slope that I want is equal to negative 1. That means then I could say that my slope of the normal then will be, well, I could take this 2 and put it up here, and it'll become negative 2 over negative 3. So it could just be positive 2 over 3. This right here was really important here. That I needed. Well, I'm not done yet. Maybe um, in my own notation, I've always got um, square brackets meaning the final answer. So I didn't want that. I want it to be just positive 2 over 3, and I'll just put it in a circular so I'll just circle it. That tells me I'm not done yet, but I'm close. So now I've got my value here. Well, I need to know at x equals 1, I also need to know my y value. So when x equals 1, what's y? Well, at x equals 1, let's see here now. So my, um, my y value is going to be uh, well, f at 1. So in this case right here, square root of 1, which is just 1, minus 1 squared. So that means my y value will just be 0. I can call this y1. So I could say my y1 value will be 0. My x1 value is just 1. That's the same as this. Just to pretty everything up here because I'm going to need to use point slope. Point slope needs to know y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So although this one looks a little bit horrible, we can totally deal with it now. So now maybe I'll do this in different colors. Maybe I'll do point slope now point slope. So I have y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Well, let's figure these out. So y minus and y1 is just 0. Well, that's nice. That means it just becomes y. Well, that's easy. 
and then I have um, equals m, which is just 2 over 3, times x minus 1. That's nice to look at. And maybe I can then just even multiply these out. So y equals, it's going to be 2, whoops, can't seem to write here. So y equals 2x over 3. And then I'm going to multiply 2 over 3 times negative 1. So that's going to be minus 2 over 3. So this right here, this will be my final answer. This one right here, maybe I'll put little stars by it. There we go, there's my equation of my normal. Now that may look ugly, but that is the equation of the normal of this graph. Now I can't really show you this because my uh, calculator, I don't think it can do the equation of the normal. It can certainly do the equation of the tangent, let's just see. So I'm going to say y equals, I'm going to say square root of x, because I want to graph this original equation here. I'm going to go to the right just to get out of that. So then minus x squared, because I want this x squared to be out of the square root. And I say graph. So there it is. Okay, great. Now um, let's see here if I can draw. Now I've got tangent. I'm not sure if I can actually do the normal. I don't think so. Nope. Uh, so no, I can't actually draw the normal, but I can, I mean, I could draw the tangent. Now I know the tangent isn't going to be so useful, but we can at least check that we had the right value for the tangent here. So this one right here, if I had done this, um, I want the tangent at x equals 1. And that tangent line would have been this straight line like this, which means my normal should be 90 degrees to that. Actually, maybe that is useful. So I'm going to do a little screenshot of it, just to make sure here we have everything we could want. So I'm going to take a little screenshot of this little piece right here. There it is. And I'm going to put it maybe onto our original here. I'll just uh, make a little bit of space here. Maybe I'll extend the page. And I'll just chuck it over here. Now keep in mind though that this right here, what we drew, the original function goes like this. It's just this curvy thing here. Now, this is the y, x, sorry, this is the y. This here is the tangent line, which I actually didn't care so much about. But it tells me that the tangent is minus 1.5. That's the slope of the tangent. And you might think, oh god, no, you've done it wrong. Well, no, because I didn't want the tangent, I wanted the normal. So keep in mind though, that if I wanted the normal, I would actually have this line right here. This right here would be the equation of the normal. And this one right here, well, let's see. Um, we can at least check that we did the tangent right. The tangent, slope of the tangent should have been negative 3 over 2. Negative 3 over 2 is negative 1.5. If you look, it thought that the slope of the tangent should be negative 1.5. Well, that's encouraging. Does it make any sense right here, then, that my slope of my normal is positive? Because I have a positive value in front of the x? Sure it does. And does it make sense then that my y-intercept is negative two-thirds or something? Well, sure. It all depends on how I decide to draw all this. I mean, it all depends on what the scale is here. Because I haven't maybe drawn it so accurately. But at least this is how we would do this. This is the equation of the normal. So that would be the equation of this line right here. That would be this. So I hope that helps. That's how we can find the equation of a normal. And again, the trick is, do what you did for slope uh, or the equation of a tangent line. That would be the step one, find the slope of the tangent. But then add an extra step in the middle. We find the slope of the normal. And we use this property that one slope times another slope equals negative one if those two are perpendicular to each other. In other words, if the angle is 90 degrees. Of course, the last step, just use point slope, which requires knowing the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate of the point you're interested in.